there are many wonderful fundamental properties in mathematics, uh, but here the goal is to look at how we can use the commutative, associative, and distributive properties to rethink the structure of an expression and perhaps bring some order to all the chaos you see here when you look at all these terms. So the the I think the first and most valuable term uh, property of the three I just named that I would use here personally is the commutative property. Now remember, it's not commutative; it's commutative, right? Because if you think of the word commute or move, this property tells us that if we are adding our terms, right, say a plus b plus c, we can swap the order around, say a plus c plus b, or in multiplication, we can swap the order around a times b, right, excuse me, a times b times c equals any permutation or rearranging of that, a times c times b and so forth. So here, um, I, I see that we have these groups of terms here in the beginning that we're adding. You can almost think of that as one group of terms, A. This middle group of terms are all parentheses here, tied together as well by multiplication and division and addition right here. But they're all in parentheses, it's another term, B, and then term C. So I notice that if I commute A or C next to the other term, so I have A, let's say, A plus C, and then plus b, then I might be able to cancel a lot of terms out. And that brings out the next property, you know, once we move these, we want to change the way we associate them. So I have a first, 323, plus 1200, plus 77, and then plus the c term, 2000, minus 3500, right? That's a and c. So we, I'll label that again, A and C. And then the B term, right, I'll write it again, 2 thirds times 9 sevenths divided by 6 fifths times 2 fifths and plus 1 fourth. That's term B. We'll get back to that one. Now here, I want to add A and C bef before I add them to B. So that this property that I need to uh, use right here is the associative property. Right, the associative property of addition and multiplication tells us that we can add terms a plus uh, b plus c and add a and b first, let's say, and then add c or some other permutation a plus b plus c and add the b and the c first. And in either case, these two things would be will be equal. So I should write, sorry, the equal sign here. So the associative property tells us that we can actually we can actually change right the grouping in the way we order without changing the answer. And the same is true for multiplication. A times B times C, where we do B times C first. Or if we multiply it A times B first and then multiply it C, we would get the same thing. Now in this case, you know, really we don't have A plus B plus C, we have A plus C plus b. And that's really the same thing in a different order. It's been commuted. So I'm going to add a and c first. And I know that's not going to change anything because we're adding all of these terms, right? So here, what does a equal? Well, if I add up uh, the three terms in a, I get 323 plus 1200. That's 1523. Write that down over here. Plus 77. This is all the a term. And that equals 1,600, right? So this is the A term. The C term, 2,000 minus 3,500. Well, that's the same thing if I flip the order, so 3,500 minus 2,000, but then I revert the sign, or make it negative, as many people would say. So 3,500 minus 2,000, that's 1,500. Make that negative, that's negative 1,500. So look how nice that is. If we add A and C, we get 1,600 plus negative 1,500, or just 1,600 minus 1,500, and that's 100. So we've already reduced a bunch of this expression down to just 100. Now all these expressions you, that you calculate in math are not going to simplify always so easily, but these problems are designed to simplify because that's the goal, is to see if you can simplify when you're given the opportunity. So look for chances to simplify. So here, this whole chunk of fractions in the parentheses, right? 
We're going to write it out, and then we're going to break this thing down. Okay. So, what do we do? Well, the first thing I would do is rewrite the division operation to multiplication. Um, now, when you're dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that tells us we're going to get 100 plus, now we have 2 over 3, times 9 over 7. Now we multiply by 5 over 6, right? Instead of dividing, multiply by the reciprocal, we flip that fraction. Times 2 over 5, and then plus 1 fourth. So all of the multiplication here needs to happen first. And again, we're going to be using our associative and commutative properties. The, the idea is to think of this whole fraction string all in terms of multiplication. Now, I wouldn't normally do this, but I want to show you what I mean when I say think of it in terms of multiplication. This is something you can realize, but something you don't need to write out. But I think it's valuable to write out once. So 2 over 3, maybe that's 2 over 1 times 1 over 3. This is the same thing. And I'm doing this to show you how I can commute these terms. 9 over 7 is 9 over 1 times 1 over 7, and that's 9 sevenths. Times 5 over 6 is times 5 over 1 times 6 over 1, and times 2 fifths is times 2 over 1 times 1 over 5. All I did was kind of expand uh, each of these fractions into pairs of factors. So 2 over, two over 3 is 2 over 1 times 1 over 3, right? And that's 2 thirds. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 thirds, and so forth. 9 times 1 is 9, 1 times 7 is 7, 9 over 7 is 9 sevenths, 5 times, oops, I made a mistake, 5 times 6 is 30, but we need it to be 5 times 1 over 6, right? 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 6 is 6, that's 5 sixth, 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 5 is 5, that's 2 over 5, and we have plus 1 over 4, which you can't really touch yet. So I, I did all that because usually I would just cancel out these terms when possible, but I want you to see why we're able to cancel out. So, so we, we split these fractions up. And because it's all multiplication, we can now move the fractions around and pair them any way we want to. So I'm going to move these two together, right? So that becomes 1 third times 9 over 1. That's just 9 over 3, and that's going to cancel out to 3. And are there any other terms? I can move together to cancel out. Sure. I want to move these two together, right? Because we're multiplying, we can do that. Here, we can't move the one fourth anywhere because it's being added separately. Either all multiplication or all addition is when you can move it. Now it's mixed. So 5 over 1 times 1 over 5, that's going to be 5 over 5. What else? Well, let's look through this here. Okay. I guess the, the last two, we have 2 over 1, 1 over 6, 1 over 7, and 2 over 1. 1 over 7, uh, 7 is prime, and there are no multiples of 7 here, so it won't cancel anything out. But the 2 and the 6 um, is a friendly pair to use. That'll give us 2 over 6, or 1 third. So now when we set this all up again, we still have, oops, the 1 seventh here. And over here, 2 over 1, or just 2. And we have one fourth here. And now look what happens. I mean, all this back work. And here, nine over three is three. Five over five is one. We don't need to think about it anymore because one doesn't matter. It's essentially, multiplication. Two over six is one over three. And now all this complexity reduces, right? We have two times three, which is six. But now look at this. Here, there's a three down here and a three up here. I could rearrange again, but I'm running out of room here on the canvas, so I'm going to cancel it out, right? I could actually move this 3 times 1 and multiply it by 1 over 3, but that's just going to be 1 anyway, right? So now, look at that. Everything went away except for the 2 and the 1 seventh. So it's 2 times 1 seventh, that's 2 over 7, plus 1 fourth. Now, to add these two fractions, we just get a common denominator. I'm going to use... Uh, 28, right? 7 times 4. So our first fraction, multiply it by 4 over 4, because it's 8 over 28, plus multiply 1 fourth by 7 over 7 to get 7 28ths, right? 7 over 7. And here we have 15 28ths, right? So, um, 
So it, here, right, that's our fraction plus 100. So we, uh, this all gets down to 100 and 15 over 28. So there's two things I want to end with here. Um, first of all, be very weary or wary or careful, I should say, when there's a plus sign mixed in with multiplication. Don't attempt to cross this 4 out with other parts of these numbers. It just won't work, right? Think of the way addition and multiplication, how different they are. For example, if I had um, 2, right, plus 1 half, that's 2 and a half, right? Of course it is, but uh, if we were just going through this and canceling out, you might see 2 over 2 and just cancel and say, oh, it's just 1. But then you get 1 plus 1. Is that 2? No, this isn't 2, right? So in addition, you can't cancel out numerator and denominator the same way we cancel them out uh, with multiplication. And let me show you, lastly, the way I would actually do this. I wouldn't expand all of this. I would just write it like this. I see that there's a 9 and a 3. So I cross them out and write 3 up here because 3 remains. I would cross this 3 out, right? And this 2 out, because 3 times 2 is 6, with this 6. The 5 and the 5 would cancel out, and there would be 2 over 7, right? Which is what we, in fact, did have here. And 2 over 7 plus 1 fourth is 15 28ths, and I would, that's how I would solve it. So this, this whole mode of canceling out is based upon this expansion right here. Um, if you're given a question on the distributive property as well, I realize this, this problem didn't actually use that property. Um, all that's happening with distributive property, let's say we have 3 times 2x plus 4, and then let's do a couple of, a couple of examples, 3 times 2x minus 4, and then 3 times negative 2x minus 4, and negative 3 times negative 2x minus 4, and lastly, negative 3 times 2x plus 4. We'll go back to the original. So this is just going to be a procedural explanation, not a conceptual. Um, but what's happening with the distributive property is you're distributing a number, right? You distribute this number to all the terms inside the parentheses. And the terms in the parentheses, which are 2x is one term, 4 is the other in this case. Notice how they're all separated by addition or subtraction. That's because this property only makes sense when you're adding or subtracting uh, terms. That's when you can distribute. So 3 times, here's how you would go through it, 3 times 2x, you distribute 3 to the first term, that's 6x's, and 3 times 4 is 12, so plus 12. Sometimes students ask, you know, why can we multiply 3 by 2x? They're not common terms, like, like they're thinking when, when you have 3 plus 2x, that doesn't equal 5x, so how come we can do 3 times 2x? Well, this is very different, 3 times 2x, you know, 2x means two groups of x, and 3 times, that means you have 3 groups of 2x. So 3 times 2x says, oh, we have 3 groups of 2x. So that's really 2x plus 2x plus 2x, which is 6x. So multiplication that is saying something entirely different than 3 plus 2x. And 3 plus 2x, you're adding 3 to 2 groups of x. And you don't know what the groups of x are. But when you're multiplying 3 by 2x, you're just tripling the amounts of groups of x you have. If I've if I didn't mess that up in saying it. So here, 3 times 2x is 6x. But here, be careful, 3 times minus 4, so that's, that's negative now, is minus 12. Here, 3 times negative 2x is just negative 6x. It's just switch signs there. And 3 times negative 4 is the same, minus 12. In this example, we have minus 3 times minus 2x. That's a positive 6x. And minus 3 times minus 4 that's positive 12. Here, last but not least, we have negative 3 times 2x. That's negative 6x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Right? Um, so here we have different variations of the of the problem of, of distributing terms uh, over multiplication, over, over addition or subtraction. Thank you.